Hello everyone, I am David Resnick. I have just completed my 30th year on the faculty and since 1985 I've been teaching vertebrate comparative anatomy. When I arrived here in 1985, many of the things that I would love to have done with anatomy were not possible because one of the things that makes anatomy a captivating subject is the remarkable skeletons that the animals have and we had no real skeleton collection. After I'd been here for a year or two, one of the graduate students at the time, Judd Case, had the idea that there were great skeletons to be had in the form of animals at the San Diego Zoo that died and had gone through their pathology department. He made contact with someone in the department and said that we would appreciate it very much if we could have those carcasses and then prep our own skeletons from them. The first gift that we got from them was this animal right here. It was a lion and it raised some controversy to bring a couple of hundred pound large cat to the building for a dissection. But then the faculty and the chairman saw 30 students walking out of the lab smiling and saying that dissecting this animal was the best thing they had ever done in, as an undergraduate. And so from that point on, we became established as a place where the San Diego Zoo could go to if they had animals that were available and had gone through autopsy. And what you're looking at around in this room is the product of almost 20 years of volunteerism on the part of the undergraduates who were taking this class. Because in addition to taking anatomy, very often they had the opportunity to help prep a large specimen. One of the re specimens that we got shortly after the lion was this animal right here. This is a male northern white rhinoceros that was caught as an adult in the wild in 1952 and then died pretty much of old age at around 1989. And at the time that he died, he was one of 21 in the world. There now are only about eight or nine of them still alive. And so this is something that's a, a rare privilege for us to have and for students to be able to work with. Here we have the skull of a female elephant. She was the first elephant on which they had tried to do an abortion. Her fetus had died and they successfully completed the operation, but she got peritonitis and she died as well. She was a young animal and they gave us the head and they gave one of the legs to a member of our anthropology department because he was dying to have fresh elephant bone to test some of his ideas about tool use and tool making in Native Americans, which had elephants to work with, at least in the forms of mammoths and mastodons, and he wanted to see what fresh bone was like. Over here we have some trophy skulls of African antelopes, uh, lesser kudu and oryx and other types of animals. They had many of these frozen and they were happy to give them to us so that we could prep the specimens. Here we have our big cats. In addition to the lion, we have a Bengal tiger, a Sumatran tiger. There we have a cheetah. We actually have two cheetahs in our collection. Um, here we have a pygmy hippopotamus, a tapir, an eastern kiang, an endangered species of, of horse that's found in Asia. And in fact, I don't know that any of them are still wild in Asia, uh, but we have one in our collection. Um, then we have here a male orangutan who died in the Santa Ana Zoo. And as you can see from his vertebral column, we're here where the vertebrae are fused. This is an animal that had serious arthritis. He was an animal that was kept in an old fashioned zoo which were pretty much like prison cages. The animals weren't able to be active and as a consequence their skeletons deteriorated severely and so this animal by the time he died would have been in a world of pain and he's a very good animal to have for anatomy because it gives students a chance to see what arthritis is and what it looks like at the level of the skeleton. Here we have some of our collection of cetaceans. These are porpoises and whales and they have very bizarre skeletons. One of the things that they're very good for illustrating is how the bones of the skull are reorganized. As the shape of the skull changes, then the individual bones that comprise the skull must change in shape. The actual bones are the same in all of these animals, but, but the arrangement of the bones is quite different. So for example, these are the nostrils, which are now on the top of the head, which means that all of these bones right here are the same bones that you have between your nose and your mouth. And in us, they're quite short, but here they're quite long and stretched out. And then the bones in the back of the skull are very compressed and they're actually asymmetrical. Some of them are missing. And here you're looking at a short beaked whale where, where this part of the skull has become so asymmetrical it would look abnormal. But in fact, this is what the animals normally look like. It's just part of the process of bone reorganization. One of the nice things you can do with comparative 
skeletons is look at how animals are adapted to certain lifestyles. So for example, this is a cheetah, which was assembled by an undergraduate named Dan Duffy, who later went on to uh, medical school. Uh, but what we can do is talk about why a cheetah can run so fast. We can compare the cheetah with the lion or the tiger and illustrate very graphically how the skeleton has been modified to enable these animals to accelerate and attain such high running speeds. Plus we have the trophies. This is a giraffe. We were given a large female giraffe and I know in a way that very few people know how big a giraffe really is because I've skinned and prepped a giraffe with the help of many other people. This is a manatee. This is a camel. Um, we have gigantic birds. So for example, this is a rhea. And we also have an emu that we prepped as part of our collection. And all these are specimens that students get to work with when they study anatomy here. But the important thing is that all of these are a legacy of work that was done by former students, generations of students between about 1988 and a little after the year 2000 when we stopped generating our own skeleton collection. Thank you.